Right, a bit of an early morning start this morning. Got a bit more to um, catch up. We were meant to be here yesterday, but because of weather, and it's still persisting, we're here today. But we'll uh, to doodle on a bit further. But Little Blue Lake, a bit disappointing, not blue. But it says it's pretty rare to actually find it blue these days. But it's uh, 47 metres deep, 40 metres across. Been here for tens of thousands of years. Beautiful fresh water, super inviting. It'd be really, really inviting if it was about a 30 odd degree day, but not today. And they say that it's about uh, yeah, about 12 degrees all year round. So uh, yeah, real, real pretty little watering hole. Little Blue Lake. Anyway, next destination, over that way somewhere. Um, weather permitting, Mount Shank. If you see it, you know we made it. If you don't see it, the weather turned to custard. See you around the corner. Well, we'll see how we go. It's windy, clouds are still ominous. Mount Shank, we made it. So, uh, 900 meters return to the viewing platform, that's not too bad, eh? I know, yeah, well, 900 meters, it's a 30 minute return. Uh, some steep sections. There's a crater rim height, you can go all the way, all the way around, it's about two kilometers and takes about an hour return. Um, and then you can go down into the crater floor um, that's 1.3 kilometers return and takes an hour and a half. Holy moly, this was worth the climb. So we've uh, come up 100 meters, um, which I suppose is a bit, bit shy of the, uh, the Centennial Memorial one that we went up to, which was, uh, well, above sea level, it was uh, 190 meters. I'm not too sure exactly what sea level this one would be, but we've come up 1,040 steps whew, to this breathtaking view. And it wasn't the steps that took my breath away. Well, partially maybe. But this is, uh, yeah, Australia's possible youngest volcano. It's a doozy. So there's a walk apparently down into the, 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 the base of the volcano, the caldera or whatever you call it. But yeah, this is def definitely a beautiful um, cauldron. Um, I've been to one in New Zealand, Narahoe, and uh, sort of, yeah, kind of reminds me. I don't think Narahoe would be as big around, but yeah, that's, that's spectacular. So yeah, good little walk up here. Um, I don't know whether we can just pick it out, but pretty much over in the distance there, that was uh, the Centennial Memorial one that we climbed Mount Gambia, but it's in the clouds over there. And uh, we don't really have uninterrupted views right here where I've picked, but I've got a, a spot which is um, not so windy and I can keep my hat on. <laughs> but that's out towards the coast over there. Slow coach. There you are. Yeah, what happened to you? I thought you told me I had to walk around the rim, so I headed off in the rim. Oh, well, you said you wanted a head start. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> oh, I put the gas on. I was just talking. It was pretty interesting um, when we were over on the far side there. I did the filming on this side and just saw all the green. Yeah. And then when you come over this side, you see how barren the sides are. So it's got something to do with the explosion or the nutrients that were deposited, or maybe the prevailing winds, the sun. But uh, yeah, she's definitely pretty barren on this side as far as any soil goes. This side looks good. Cool though, eh? Yeah, pretty neat. How crazy, how crazy is this? Here I was talking about all the beautiful nutrients and all the nice grass or, or greenery and bits and pieces on that side. And a ruddy goat 
a rope goat, <laughs> a goat is standing in that jagged little spot there of all the places. Well, must be the best spot, they know. Didn't expect that. We made it to the top of the rim walk. Had to take my lid off just in case it ends up at the bottom and I'm not going down there. <laughs> what a cool vantage point though. So we started over the side here and we've gone all the way around. So yeah, from here you can see how that vegetation, what I was trying to talk about, it's very vegetated here. And then over this wall here, it's pretty barren. And then just down this area here is where that goat was. So I've got a clear shot. Obviously Mount Gambia is over in the distance there. The rain has passed, the clouds lifted, and uh, we've got a bit of a view. So it was a bonus. Man, we've been so lucky to be able to, yeah, the wind die off a bit, the rain stops, it's pretty awesome. So not a bad, an easy walk around, but uh, just watch your footing. It's a bit slippery sometimes with the, the gravelly rock. Anyway, better catch up with Judy again, she's off. Talk about a bugger for punishment. So what do you do when the, uh, the wind's blowing from the south? Like nobody's business? You come to the most southern point of southern Australia. <laughs> and I tell you what, she's wild and windy. Beautiful rocks, I think just in the distance here, I don't know whether you can make it out, but it's the shape of a camel. So uh, obviously called Camel Rock. And it's hard to believe that this spot here, out here was apparently the uh, the Cape Northumberland, I think it was, uh, lighthouse. There's a little plaque over here, which I've come down and have a look at. So uh, there was a lighthouse keeper here, um, Benjamin Germain. Uh, he was the first light keeper, Cape Northumberland, uh, between 1859 and 1865. And uh, I think in 1859 and in 1861, he was here and helped save lives on the, uh, the Imelda and the Omerod. Now, there was a heap of boats wrecked out here. The, the list is huge, there's gotta be like 20 of them. Uh, but that Imelda was the one that, um, when we were over in Robe, um, they used the uh, boiler plates to, um, what was it, to, to reinforce the jail. That's right, got it. But man, what a rugged coastline. It is, it is angry out here. Um, fantastic rocks, just breathtaking. There's obviously, oh, and there's some seals. Seen a couple of seals down here. Drew's got some photos. Uh, yeah, seals gone for a swim, but yeah, she managed to pick them up. But uh, if it's okay in the wind, obviously the camel rock behind me, and these wicked structures out here. Yep, it's a pretty rough, rugged coastline. Anyway, I better go. We'll, we'll probably go over the other side. I think Drew's, Drew's gone for a walk over that way, and we'll see if we can get another vantage point of this most southerly point of South Australia. Well, here we are. I've sat on the bench to prove it. South Australia's southernmost point. Pretty staggering. It's good to, it's good to be able to drive up here. It's nice, good easy access. Only a uh, quick stones throw away from a few popular destinations. Oh, the South Pole, only 5,700 kilometers that way. Whoa, it's pretty cool. Nah, awesome, awesome rock, rock features. Um, really lucky with the day. Yeah, it's windy, and but it's, it's not raining, touch wood. It's been good. Really, really pleased. Love it. It's a good spot.
this is a test 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 to make sure that the motorhomes comes out the right way does that look like the right way that's not the right way is it right testing testing just checking make sure it goes around the right way and a ruddy goat a rope goat 